Okay, we got yeah. got Sora here. I'm just putting her out, her back, out the back because her mum's concerned. Yep. She's got a two month old baby, so we're just going to check out. She's just been unwell. Yes. She's come into the clinic this afternoon and had a quite a large vomit. Okay. So we thought we'd just have her checked out by you and Yeah, that's see great. If we can we might pop her up on the table actually. She she I looks pretty that. bright. Hello, darling. Did she just smile? Hey, she just smile. Hey. Oh, <laughs> oh you did smile at me. Hey, you did smile at me. Good girl, sweetie. Hey. Alright, let's pop her up. Up we get it. Up. Okay, honey. So, so vomiting at home yeah. and then vomiting. Vomiting at home and she's vomited when she's come through our front door. What's that, sweetie? Okay. All right, we'll give her a check out. Thanks. Thanks, Emily. Sora seems very bright, but Emily tells me she's just vomited a huge amount all over reception, and that's not normal. Good girl. Good girl. She's definitely got some pain in her belly. And she's dehydrated. It's all belly sore. Yeah. Waggly yeah. tail of yours. She's only a young Dalmatian, so I was worried they're a bit, a bit prone to eating things they Silly shouldn't. Things, yes. Silly things, yes. That's right. My first thought is, has she eaten something and now she's got a gut obstruction? What have you eaten, hey? Nadia, Sura's owner, already has a lot on her plate. She has a little two-month-old baby, and you can see how concerned she is about her dog. Uh, we got her when she was about eight years old, I believe, from a puppy breeder out in Rosewood. So she breeds like pedigree dogs and stuff like that. Sora's granddad is actually like Australian champion. Oh, hello. Nadia tells me that Sora loves to chew on her toys, but my heart sinks when she says they can't find her favourite rope toy. The first step is to give some medication for the pain and then I want to start her on intravenous fluids because she is very dehydrated. Good girl. Thanks, Maddie. Yeah, that was very good. Bravest girl. Good girl. We need to get to the bottom of what's going on here because if that rope toy is stuck inside her, then it could perforate her gut and she could die. Yeah. Good girl. Oh. See, they don't care. first, hey? See if you've got something in there. In here. Good girl. That's the way. All right, so really what we want to see here in x-ray is has she got anything like a rock or a bone stuck? Um, she certainly eats a lot of different things. Hey, sweetheart, because we know you love your toys. You love to chew on your toys, don't you? Hey? The other thing that her owner is really worried about is the fact that she, her, you know, they've got a two-month-old baby in the household as well, um, and if she's sick with something, is it something that could be passed to the baby? You look a bit quiet, but you haven't stopped your wagging your tail, has it? First x-ray just coming up and okay that's good good so far anyway I'm certainly not seeing anything like a, a rock or a piece of bone um, in fact the intestine is not it doesn't look particularly dilated either which is good often if you've got an obstruction you actually see, you see dilated loops of bowel where the gas is accumulating behind the obstruction that's not happening here so this is all very promising I take the x-rays and I'm not seeing any foreign object there. However, Sura is not completely out of the woods. We're going to need to do an ultrasound to be absolutely sure there's nothing stuck. Tracking the intestine on the ultrasound and it's all looking pretty normal. No toys in there as far as we can see. So back to bed now for Sura.
with the signs that Sura is showing, I'm starting to wonder, does she just have a bad case of gastro? So you got some initial bloods back for Sora. And yeah, it's good news. It actually doesn't have the typical thing that we would look for for an obstruction, which is uh, a very alkalemic profile because of the vomiting from the stomach. So that's a good sign. That may be more indicative of something called hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. It's a dog specific condition where they develop vomiting and often bloody diarrhea. We know for Sora she came in with vomiting. She's now got bloody diarrhea. The x-rays and ultrasounds show us that there's no obstruction there. It's looking more and more like HGE. So I think we'll start Sora on antibiotics, yep. given that she's now got the bloody diarrhea yep. um, and it's looking more and more like hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. Hey, what's happened? Hey, Alex. Um, Sora has just had explosive diarrhea in her cage and there was a fair amount of blood in there as was well. Was there? Yes. Okay, yeah. she's giving her a bath. I am, I'm just cleaning her up at the moment. Okay. Did you want a sample of that diarrhea of as well? Of yes. Not really, but no, I think I, I, think I probably should. Sure. Yeah, I'll have a okay. look at it. Um, yeah. Just because we're just worried yeah. that maybe she's she's got something that the, the baby could pick up. So I just want to be yeah. sure that that's not a concern. Okay. So yeah, I'll take a sample. Yeah. Your poor darling. Yeah. Not feeling the best. The sore bottom. Oh dear. All right, I'll leave her with you. Sure. Is that sample in the lab? Or? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've just okay. popped it on the bench for you. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thanks. Hi Nadia, it's Alex here. How are you? Now the good news is that the x-rays didn't show us any kind of bone or rock or any, any uh, foreign body in there, which was good. When I tell Nadia that Sura doesn't need surgery, the relief in her voice is great to hear. What did happen soon after we did the imaging though is she has developed pretty explosive diarrhea. So um, diarrhea with quite a lot of blood in it now as well. So the nurses are just cleaning her up at the moment, poor, poor girl, but um, it's, uh, it's looking more and more like uh, there's a condition called hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. So she doesn't need surgery, but she does need fluids and pain relief. And I'm also going to start her on some antibiotics. For now, we're doing everything we can. She's on her drip and we're going to let her get some rest. So I've got some chicken for Sura. I'm gonna wake her up and see if she's hungry. I can see as I bring the chicken over that her eyes light up. Look at you, did you have a good sleep? Did you have a good sleep? Would you like some chicken? Oh, you're a very delicate eater. Good girl. It's a bit cold, isn't it? <laughs> hey, should I have warmed it up for you a bit more? Should I? Good girl. Good girl, good to see you eating it. Would you like a bit more? Good girl. It's been a rough day for Sura, so it's really good to see her enjoying the food. Maybe? Oh, there we go. Good girl. Good girl. So now that she's had some food, we're going to let her rest and we'll see her in the morning. How's your bottom? How's your bottom going? How's your diarrhea? Hey, is it good? Is it much better? Sura's looking so much brighter this morning. She hasn't had any vomiting or diarrhea overnight. I think it's time to send her home. Oh dear. No, you say I just want to go home. Oh, I just want to go home. All right, so it's time for this girl to go home. Her mum and her dad's come today, Michael. So Michael and Nadia are waiting to, to see her. She's definitely feeling a lot better. She's got a little, her little waggy tail back. Um, so we'll take her out there and, and uh, yeah, your mum and dad are waiting. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get you home. Who's in here? Come in here. Who's in here? Hello. Oh, you know who that is, don't you? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's such a little smiler. Hey, hey, aren't you? How does it feel seeing her again? It's really good. Yeah. Even just a night away, we missed her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she's definitely part of the family, aren't you? Hey. Nadia still hasn't managed to solve the mystery of the missing rope toy, but at least Sura is feeling better. Good 
Buddha. What's happened with Buddha? Hey, baby. What's your shot? Um, he's not acting normal. Okay. It's like he's blind. We come home from the shops. Yeah. It's just like spinning in circles. Yeah, circles. And okay. Like, yeah. Does, does he seem like he can't? He, does he walk into a wall or anything like no, that? No, he just or? backed up into into the wall and then okay. just stayed there. Just wouldn't move. Okay. When I examined Buddha on the table, my first thought was he was very vacant and he was really stiff. And never done anything like no. this before? No. no. We checked the yard, we couldn't see any toads, we couldn't see anything like that. Yeah. All right. Hey, mate. I don't know, they said like he couldn't, um, like he was blind. They thought he went blind. Yeah, like he couldn't see. Hey, mate. You look so worried. Hey, you okay? Um, so we were just out shopping and then we got home and Buddha kind of was sitting in front of the car because we drove our car in the backyard but and wouldn't get out of the way. It was like he didn't know what to do. So he was just kind of spinning around in circles and then like backing himself up because it was like he didn't know where to go. Um, and it was kind of like he'd just completely gone blind. As I'm examining Buddha, he seems to be getting worse. Hey, can you see what's going on? I think he can see. He sort of wants to curl round. Can you see like how he really wants to curl round that way? It's uncomfortable. Yeah. With what Leander and Paul are telling me and looking at these clinical signs, I have no idea what's going on with Buddha until Paul lifts up his lip. Oh, he yes. is. Definitely. Okay, I reckon you've had a toad. The gums are bright red and injected. What do you reckon? Yeah, that's yeah. very injected. Buddha's muscles are becoming more rigid. He could have a seizure at any moment. All right, let's um, let's rinse his mouth out. And he's a terrier as well, so almost I certainly love the, toads. love the toads. Anything that moves. Hey, mate. And he, he just does look off with the fairies. He really does, and that's very typical of a toad. So let's yeah, let's get his mouth washed out. When a toad releases the poison from the glands on its back, it can often go into the dog's mouth, particularly if they pick up the toad. It's very irritant, and what we often see is they salivate heavily. Now, we didn't see that with Buddha, but we did see the red gums, we did see the, the stiffness of the body, and we did see this vacant expression where they're almost on a high. So we're rinsing his mouth out. If there's any evidence of toad toxin on his gums, this will help to get rid of it. So the, the toad toxin is actually really sticky. Uh, it really kind of holds onto their gums. So, so you often hear about needing to use a hose or something like that, but actually you're far better off to get a wet cloth and really give it a good rub along the gums. That's much, much, much better way. All right, Buddha. But you always got to be a little bit careful because when they've had some of this toxin, it, it, it's, it gives them a bit of a high. They just don't behave quite like themselves. And so they can do things they wouldn't normally do. So we just got to be a little bit careful, fingers in the mouth. But we're going to give it a really good rub along there. But he's been a very good boy. Hey, mate. He's a in his back legs. Yeah. And this guy's not good. Oh, yeah, mate. You're not good. So once we've done a bit of this, we'll actually pop a catheter in. Good boy, Buddha. I think you're feeling a bit odd. He's actually almost coming a bit more round with it, isn't he? Like mm. when he first came in, he just wouldn't move at all. He's feeling a bit sick in the tummy. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, I might go and have a, give him a bit of diazepam and then I'll go have a chat to them. This is like uh, Valium essentially and it'll just help to just relax some of his muscles where he's really rigid there. Right. How's that feel? Buddha's responding to the medication, his muscles are becoming more relaxed and that's a really good sign. Should we put me down for a walk, see what you can do? So we're just going to give him a fluid bolus. Quite often with these guys, um, the, the treatment's not complicated, it's washing the mouth out, it's giving them some medication to relax the muscles which he's had and some IV fluids and hopefully with that that'll be good enough to get him through this, get the toxin out of his system and get him home. Silly boy, you're silly. You're a silly boy. Yes you are. You're a silly boy.
Can I pop you down? Oh, there we go. He's on the move now. Hey, good boy. The toxin from the toad, it affects, it can affect not only their heart, but it also affects them, their neurological system. So mentally, they become altered. Um, and that's what we're seeing with Buddha at the moment. But he's definitely better than when he came in. He's not quite himself, but um, with time, I think he's gonna be okay. When I tell Leander and Paul what's going on, they're not surprised. This is not the first time that Buddha's had a toad. Probably, I don't know, five or six years ago, but it wasn't, serious enough like it may have happened at say 5 30 in the morning and we we're up at 5 30 in the morning so we were able to sort of wash their mouth out and i think we may have taken them to the vet just to be checked over and they were fine but it was obviously not you know they hadn't got to it enough for anything to happen hey hey little man it's clear that Buddha is a very special part of Leander and Paul's life, as is his sister Bella. They're litter mates, but it's normally Bella who ends up at the vet. When we first got him, he had a really big belly, so we just called him Buddha because it's suited, and now he's just lazy, so he, he suits his name. Where's that big belly from? Yeah. Bella, yeah, Bella's entertaining, but he's the easy one, so suits his name definitely. Not getting out of bed in the morning. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> Sleeps with his head on the pillow in between us, so yeah, they're pretty much inseparable, so yeah, they're beautiful. We also noticed on his, um, on his collar, <laughs> something there. So yeah. What's, what's on his collar? Little shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's him to a T. He's arrogant. He doesn't yeah. listen. Yeah. And yeah, it's just about that. Hey. Oh, looking better already. Hey, Buddha, look at you. Go now. Hey, come here, little man. Come here. Buddha's recovery has been remarkably quick and I think he's going to be able to go home tonight. Go home to little Bella, your sister, hey? Is it Bella and Buddha, is it? And Bella and Buddha. Pretty blue bandage for you. Trooper. He's a trooper. Good boy. No more toads. Promise? No more toads? Yeah. No more toads? Katie's brought Bailey down to AES tonight. She's distraught and yeah, she's just really upset. She has at least eight puppies. Okay. Potentially more. Um, yep. She started giving birth around three o'clock. Okay. Had the first um, four puppies pretty quickly and yep. the fourth one was deceased. Mm -hmm. um, and then okay. she stopped giving, she stopped having contractions for yep. about an hour. And yep. then an hour later she started contractions again about 10, 15 minutes in between. Okay. But not the Bailey's had three pups and then she's passed a dead pup. And given that she's struggling to give birth now, Katie's really concerned that the rest of the puppies may also have died. Good big girl, aren't you? Katie, how's all the other puppies been? Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good girl, Bailey. And she's been fine like, as well. She's yeah. Had one still born? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 I can see that Katie and Bailey have a really special bond. Katie said to me that Bailey, she's her best friend. So I'm just going to do an examination, okay, and yeah. see if there's a pop in the canal. Is yeah. that okay with yeah. you? Yeah, so we can do whatever you okay. need to do. So there's nothing in there at the moment, so that's really important because we know that there's not a pup that's lodged in there. Um, but we are going to need to find out what's happening with the rest of the pups. Yeah. 
What we need to make sure of with Bailey is how are the rest of the pups that are still in there. She seems in good health, she's really bright, but she's also very tired, she's been pushing for a while. Um, and you know we just don't know whether she's got the energy to be able to push the rest of the pups out. So she's looking around for her puppy, she's quite worried, you know, she definitely looks you know, quite tired as well. She, when I did the examination on her to see if there was a pup stuck in the canal, she really is not contracting at all and that's a real concern. Oh, we've got these babies, honey. They're beautiful. Beautiful. Nice ones. There you go, sweetheart. Oh, what a good girl. You want to be Yeah. Let's see if we can get your babies a feed, hey? Yeah, they do seem quite hungry, don't they? They're really hungry, yeah. Yeah. Does she seem to have milk there? She's got quite a bit of milk, actually. That's good. Yeah, you're going to be a good mum. Yeah, on. Um, she's starting to push. Bailey starts to have contractions and I'm thinking maybe she is going to have these pups on her own. How's she doing Trace? No, she stopped pushing. So initially after they fed for about five minutes she did a couple of pushes and that's it. Then nothing. Nothing. Nothing yeah. just comes through. I, I just don't think she's going to be able to push all these I pups out. I think she's out. tired. She is, isn't she? Bailey was having contractions but she stopped now and I really think we have no other choice. We need to go to Caesarean. I think we're just gonna to need to get these pups out as quickly as we can. These guys seem pretty good, don't you? Hey, yeah, I might actually have a look at them as you take them out, just check them out. Hey, little guy, look at you. Oh, shh, your mummy will get upset if you make too much noise. Hey, I'm okay, you're a little boy, aren't you? Hey, little boy. Mwah. All right, Bailey. We're looking after them. It's almost like she doesn't really know what they're about, does she? This is the thing with a first time mum. Sometimes it's just, it, she kind of ha has half an idea of what she needs to do, but she's a little bit confused. As I said, she's, she's a little bit anxious and I think that's all contributing to why she's feeling overwhelmed and tired. Now, look, we're just gonna clip her for ultrasound now. I really wanna see what's happening with those other pups. Good girl. Good girl. I know you're all worried. All I really want to see is what those heart rates are looking like. Give an indication so I can let Katie know when she passed the, the dead one, um, you know, she rang for advice uh, to her friend and they, they said that probably the rest of the puppies were dead. So she's in a lot of distress and explains why she was so upset when she came through. Now, I think there's actually a reasonable chance that the rest of the pups are at least the majority of them will still be alive. Um, so I want to, part of this is really, I want to be able to reassure her that, you know, there's, there could be a, a good outcome even though she's lost one pup. Oh, you're a wiggly girl. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. She's just a really anxious girl and she's just worried. But I really do need her still. I, I just can't see anything if she's, if she's wiggling around. We take Bailey into ultrasound and she's not coping. She's getting anxious, she's looking around for her puppies and it's difficult for me to even perform the scan. I look on the screen and I can see a fetal heartbeat. This is great news because now I know at least one of those pups in there are still alive. Got a beautiful heartbeat there. That's awesome, really good. Okay, you have got some beautiful pups in there. So you can see the heart beating there, so that's great. So there's at least one pup there that's got a heart rate, a normal heart rate of 220, and that's really good, good girl. But uh, the other pup that I can see on this side, I, I'm not seeing a lot there, I'm not seeing a heartbeat, so I am worried that at least one of the other pups may have died. Now, this makes it even more urgent for us to go in as quickly as possible and get these other pups out because there's at least one pup in there that at the moment is viable and um, has a good chance of survival. So getting in there, getting that pup out and then seeing what the other pups, what kind of state they're in. I'll pop you up on the table. One, two, three. Oh, good girl. 
Oh, goodness me. All right. Hey, can you sit down? All right, I've got everything we need. All right, let's go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Here we go, Bailey. Off to sleep. So we really, now that she's asleep, the time is really ticking, we really need to get her prepped into theatre as quickly as we can because even though we'll keep the anaesthetic fairly minimal, any amount of anaesthetic is going to have some effect on the pups, so the quicker that we can get them out the better. Okay, we've got most of this hair off already, so we're already well on our way. Alright, because I'm going to scrub. This is generally a surgery that I'll do on my own, but obviously where I'll really need help is when these puppies are delivered. Then we've got a team of nurses who are ready to start resuscitating these puppies because what we know is that they've been in there for quite a long time now after the other puppies were born. Uh, we just don't know what state they'll be in and so I want to make sure that we do everything we can to save as many lives as possible. How are we going? Okay. Awesome. All right, I think we're all ready. Yeah, um, yeah let's do this. I'm in surgery and I start to examine the uterus and I notice that all of the remaining puppies are in one horn. So we've got one horn that's actually completely empty and all the pups are sitting in the other horn of the uterus. So, you know, I don't know if that is significant, but um, that's certainly what's going on. Okay, we ready? Multiple puppies coming at once, actually. I start to remove one puppy and another puppy comes immediately behind it. Now it's go time for the resuscitation team. Go. I'm in surgery looking after Bailey, but in my mind I'm wondering, are these puppies alive? From the smile on Kayla's face, it looks like it's good news. And actually, I can hear them. <laughs> oh my god, aren't they gorgeous? Oh, look at them. That's just beautiful. That is amazing. I can't wait to tell their owner about this. She came in here thinking they were all dead. She's going to be so excited. Yay. Good job, Kayla. <laughs> Obviously, moments like that, that is exactly what makes it all worthwhile. That's such a great result. All right, let's get you stitched up, little mama. Wake you up and introduce you to your two new sons. I wanna go and see these puppies. Oh, hello. Oh, look at them. They're all hungry. Oh, they're waiting, for, gotta wait for their mama to wake up. They're all lively, they're all hungry. Uh, we, now we just gotta wake Bailey up and um, yeah, get them home. The surgery went well and Bailey's waking up. I can't wait to get on the phone and tell Katie the good news. Hi, is that Katie? H hey Katie, it's Dr. Alex here from Animal Emergency Service. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I just wanted to let you know that Bailey's awake. Um, everything went really well. Now, it was a bit of a surprise in there. There actually were only three pups left in there, not, not four. Um, 
and we we obviously knew that there was that pup that, that had passed away but there's two beautiful healthy boys um yeah two other beautiful healthy life boys yeah really really good both boys so i think there's three boys and two girls now so it's been a very emotional day for Katie and while she gets some rest, we're going to take care of Bailey and the pups tonight and that's going to start with giving Bailey a good bath. I think this is probably the nicest part for her after having these puppies is giving her a good clean up. Um, making her smell nice and ready to, to go home. So she's actually not minding this at all. Nice to have a, a sponge bath. <coughs> she's looking for her puppies. Yeah. Hey, okay. worried about your puppies. Oh. They're fine. They're fine. We've got yeah, you cleaned up. They don't want you all smelly. The next thing is to give these new pups their first feed. How are you going? Can I see your puppies? Can I see? Look at them all. Hey, good girl. Good girl. Oh, you're a good girl. You're a good mama, aren't you? You're a good mama. Hey. They're nice and strong, that's for sure. They're feeding really well. I mean, look at them go. No worries there. Hey, I just want to give them a cuddle. I just want to give them a cuddle, but they're too busy. Hey, aren't they? You are a good girl. Oh, no. The puppies are asleep now, they've had a good feed, and it's time for Bailey to get some rest. Look at you all. They're looking great, aren't they? Sure are. Hey? Oh, well, she's actually, you look at that, she's starting to yeah. be much more of a mother now, which is really good. Very clever girl. Okay. Alright Miss Bailey, I'll look after you, Maria will look after the pups and let's go and see your mum. So it's time for Bailey to go home and although she's been a very good girl in hospital, I think she's going to be much happier once she gets home. She's got her new little family to look after and her mum's going to be so excited to see her. Good girl. There she is, look who's here baby. <laughs> I'm going to cry again. <laughs> How are you feeling seeing her? Oh, much better. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, I think she missed you. Hey. Yes. She's like, where's those babies? Do you want to bring her babies in, Marie? Yeah. Here we go. These are your babies. Hey, she's leaving them around there. Okay. She's brilliant. She's, she's talking to them. She's cleaning them. It's been such a privilege to be able to look after Bailey, to bring these new puppies into the world. Emergency vet work, it has its ups and downs, but days like today, this makes it all worthwhile. Okay, see you Katie. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.